just after the president's State of the Union address where he said Vladimir Putin will pay a price, the United States has tightened the economic chokehold on Russia today. The White House announcing new sanctions against Moscow for what President Biden calls Putin's war of choice. And the Justice Department just today launching a new task force to go after Putin's inner circle of billionaire Russian oligarchs. Meanwhile, the Russian military has intensified its bombardment of major cities across Ukraine, while its 40-mile convoy headed toward Kyiv remains stalled due to fuel and food shortages. A senior U.S. defense official telling us the Pentagon believes the Russians are regrouping and rethinking their plans, but still intend to surround and capture Ukraine's capital. And the massive humanitarian crisis grows larger by the day as nearly 900,000 refugees have fled the fighting to nearby countries. And Ukraine's emergency service claims more than 2,000 civilians have been killed. Well, we have a team of reporters inside Ukraine. But first, CBS's Nancy Cordes joins us from the White House. Good evening, Nancy. Good evening, Nora. From the White House, where anti-Russia protests just outside the gate appear to have become a permanent fixture. Tonight, the White House is going directly after the heart of Russia's economy, the oil industry. Nothing is off the table. President Biden today moved to squeeze Russia's biggest export, oil, restricting Russia's ability to buy the technology it needs to refine oil at current levels. Russia's indiscriminate bombing of civilian targets intensified today, prompting a dramatic vote by the U.N. General Assembly, 141 to 5, to demand Russia withdraw its troops from Ukraine. We've seen videos of Russian forces moving exceptionally lethal weaponry into Ukraine, which has no place on the battlefield. Exxon, Boeing and Siemens joined the growing list of corporate giants pulling back on Russian business. But of course I'm depressed, you know, all of us are. In an extraordinary interview with Sky News, a top Kremlin foreign policy advisor broke ranks and denounced the invasion. It's, it's very embarrassing. For all of us, not only because we turned out to be wrong, but uh, also because all Russians will be in a difficult position. We're coming for you. As President Biden foreshadowed in his State of the Union address last night, the Justice Department launched a new task force today dubbed Klepto Capture to investigate and prosecute oligarchs who try to evade sanctions. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. And they're not hard to find. In fact, a Florida teenager who used to track Elon Musk's jet has now shifted to the fleets owned by oligarchs, posting their movements on Twitter. Russia's richest man, Alexei Mordashov, now on the EU's sanctions list, recently moved his $500 million super yacht to the Seychelles. With the writing on the wall, UK-based billionaire Roman Abramovich announced he was selling London's powerhouse Chelsea soccer team. The profits, he said, would go to benefit victims of the war in Ukraine. The steps that the White House took today could slow Russian oil production in the future, but not right away, because the White House is worried about doing anything that could cause shortages in Europe or, Nora, drive the price of crude oil even higher than it is already. Such a big concern. Nancy Cordes of the White House, thank you.